Hey, welcome to Ken TV. I'm Kevin Mitchell, baby boomer and filmmaker. All we needed was one long scream, and it never happened. Together, my family and I created a TV pilot called Kin, which you can preview on KinTV.com. It is a reality show about families stepping into the virtual world of their ancestors by starring in a legacy film about their past. We all have compelling stories to tell. Share with us at KinTV.com what's your movie about. It's only fair. It's still winter time. Not only have I shown you the slopes of Utah, I'm here at the Peaks Arena, where the Olympics were in 2002. You don't know this, but uh, we live four blocks away from the University of Utah Valley. We have responsibilities, my wife and I, of uh, ministering with the youth of the college. And so tonight is ice skate night. Hey, how's it going? I think we've done this five years in a row and I still haven't slipped and fell. A few years back, on a beautiful fall day on a Saturday, my whole family helped me to tell a story about my grandmother, Mary Bailey Pack. She and my grandpa, Elmo Pack, were tremendous writers and they both left personal stories that they had written about their lives. They were very articulate and we found a little gem of my grandmother when she was two years old. So we thought we'd reenact a quick little movie about this true incident as a kin story. All right, Scarlett, can you scream for me? My second granddaughter was two at the time and her sister was four. These two are my two oldest granddaughters, Alika and Scarlett. We called upon them to help reenact a story about my grandmother, Mary Bailey Pack. When she was two years old, she wrote this in her personal history. There was an incident where their mother was almost near death. So the only thing that woke her up out of her sort of coma that she was in was a scream. And it was so important to try to tell this story, but uh, our screamer wouldn't cooperate. Bless her heart, you know they say, Pets and children are hard to work with. Can you scream for me? We should all do it. We count to three and we'll all scream. Okay. Should we do it? See if yours is louder than anyone's. Ready? One, two, three, scream. <laughs> oh. I've got chocolate milk in the car. <laughs> you want some chocolate milk? <laughs> you gotta scream for it. You gotta scream for it. Uh, <laughs> maybe not. We'll drive you or anything. Scream. We will. <laughs> This is my mother, Agnes Loray Pack Mitchell, who tried to give Scarlett a pep talk. two years old, and they need somebody that's two years old to scream. Your mother can't scream, I can't scream, just you. 
And so we're asking you to just open up your mouth and just scream just as loud as you can. After you do, you can get And then that's warm. it. Mom will hug you and cuddle you. We okay. love you very much, but we want to get a picture of you screaming. <laughs> we want a picture of me. Because that's what your grandma did. Your grandma screamed once in her life and made a difference and made her mother feel good. Do you want to make your mother feel good? Huh? She made her mother feel very good because she screamed. Sometimes we have to scream. Don't touch that. Sometimes we just have to scream. So could you stand down there and scream? So that your mother can get better? So, so did you ever scream? Head back up. Yes. Yes, that loud enough. So what's this? Where was this shot right here? Oh, that's a good scream. Look at your mom. Look at your mom. I don't know. Look at your mom. Ready? Go. Even closer. <laughs> Keep getting a little louder. Where's this at? I don't know. Yeah, this is your house. Really it's at our house. Mm -hmm. So we dressed you up and tried to get you to scream at home. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? Oh my god. She does it at Freckles. Obviously. <laughs> I screamed. Alika had her moments too. We kept doing several takes because she would wiggle or open her eyes. So what's this part? Alka's. <laughs> she was smiling and sticking. What us. happened in that part? I was dead. You were supposed to be dead and you kept what? Moving and sticking out my tongue and smiling and laughing. And go! Our mule wouldn't cooperate either and kept going the opposite direction as my nephew, Miles Mitchell, kept trying to steer him camera left. <laughs> this is Craig's man. It helped me learn more about my family history and it was fun because I got to act. It was really fun. Can you scream now? Yes. Yeah. Don't oh. do it though. Alright. On the count of three, I want both of you to scream together. <laughs> Ready? Uh -oh. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> you can't scream. <laughs> Families are forever, that's for sure. And with family, you can tell the stories about your ancestors and put them on film. Make a movie about them. Tell those stories. Everybody has a story to tell, and we all have a movie within us. We always ask. What's your movie about? Sweet! Now you've seen the behind the scenes, so here is the final short film about my grandmother, Mary Bailey Pack, which we also won first place scream. in a family film festival. Your mother can't scream, I can't scream. There's two. And so we're asking you to just Open up your mouth and just scream just as loud as you can. For nine long months, I was fed and could sleep, with no one bothering me a peep. Then one day when I did venture into the light, I was agreed with a blown right on the lower part of my back. It said, cry, fill up your lungs with air. You're in this world, be it foul or fair. So that was the beginning of this life for me. I started a series of events you'll see. I am Mary Bailey Pack.
I was born in 1907 in Wellsville, Utah, the fifth child of Cyrus Adamson and Effie Maud Bailey. I passed on from this life Christmas Eve of 1989, a year or so after my beloved Elmo left me. Mary Bailey is my great-grandmother, who came to the Blue Creek Valley as a toddler. Down the road, the Golden Spike was planted ceremoniously to connect a nation. But even as late as 1910, families trekked across by horse and wagon to start a new life. For 12 years, my ancestors toiled in Howell, Utah, to build a productive farm. Here in this spot, the Bailey family home once stood, until it was burned and plowed under as a nuisance. It's a lot of room for development. Three of Grandma Great's <laughs> surviving children came searching for the old homestead. That would just be so hard uh, for a mother, you know, to bring a family into an area that's so desolate and so difficult to work. You have to face all problems all by yourself. I mean, you had to solve it all. My mom would have been grateful for the, the time she spent here and the lessons learned. I look back at my mother and my father and the stories they told. My mother's name was Mary, always. When they talked to her, it was Sister Pack, but when they talked to me, it was Mary. And Mary was their friend. She loved to sing, and she loved to write poems. So this is uh, hallowed ground for all of us. It was in this house that I experienced a most traumatic incident. Charles. Where is your father? Why isn't he here? He's at the reservoir with the others. Mama's been sleeping all day. Grandma Hawkins came out from Benjamin to be with her. Here. Don't leave me. It's not that bad. My sister Della May had died at the age of seven. This was a real tragedy in my parents' lives. She had peritonitis resulting from a ruptured appendix. With all the help from a staff of doctors from Logan, they had not been able to save her. Effie. Effie, you've got to get better. Effie, you have your whole life ahead of you. You've got four little ones. Charles, you better go get your father. Hurry, son. There may not be much time. Mother seemed to be gradually going downhill. And with Dad buying in Howe and having to give up their home of prominence in Wellsville, she gradually got worse. This particular day, Father was with the other men of the town, walking the reservoir. Grandmother called all us children together at Mother's bedside. It suddenly began to register with me that something very serious was happening with Mother. Everyone was crying. Even at my age, I sensed the foreboding of doom that started me to scream. I can feel the constricting in my throat right now. I screamed so hard and loud. I was to learn later that my screams roused Mother from her drifting into complete unconsciousness. She folded me into her arms and cried and loved me as I've never been loved before. Mother always felt that I saved her from an untimely death. Who knows what my life might have turned out like without a mother? and never knowing six more children who would later be born into our family. <laughs>